a uh, good old holiday fruitcake. In America, fruitcakes seem to be the punchline to an inside joke. But for people in the Caribbean, especially in Belize, black and white fruitcakes are a harbinger to the Christmas and holiday season. Now let's take a look at what we'll need. 1 and 1 8 cup of butter softened to room temperature, 2 and a third cups of granulated sugar, 5 eggs separated, and some lemon extract, like a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon, all right? Now let's take a look at our dry ingredients. This is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour and I sifted it once. One tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda. And because my butter is salted, I'm not gonna add salt, but you would add half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. 10 ounces of orange juice, and of course the fruits. And the fruits come in a tub like this. And we only need two cups, and I've floured them already. So now what I wanna do is start by beating the egg whites to stiff peaks. So let me go ahead and pour the five egg whites into this large bowl. And then I'm using my electric hand mixer, which is on very high speed. Um, soft peaks happen right at about five minutes and stiff peaks happens at about eight minutes when the hand mixer is on the highest speed, all right? We're almost there. So let me go ahead and light the oven. 350 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're looking for and now we're just going to go ahead and continue with the cake because the egg whites are at stiff peak and remember we're not making meringue pie or anything like that. We're just doing that because that's how we're going to um, float our fruits, alright? That's a technique. So let's start with adding the sugar into the butter. We're going to cream this. We don't need to clean the beaters because the egg whites won't harm anything, alright? So I have the hand mixer on medium speed. And I just want to make sure that the butter and sugar are mixed well together, all right? You don't have to do this for very, very long. I'd say about four to five minutes with the hand mixer on medium speed. Now, it's time to add the egg yolks one at a time. Don't panic if you get more than one egg yolk in at a time, all right? It won't harm anything. I just try to do it one at a time because um, I want to make sure that I blend them in really well. Now, keep a spatula on hand because you're gonna need to scrape down your bowl often so that we don't miss anything. And now let me blend again before I start taking care of the dry ingredients. I'm adding the baking powder to the flour. At this point, if you're not using a salted butter, then you would add that half a teaspoon to teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna take care of my fruits. I'm just gonna go ahead and sift off the excess flour. Now when it comes to these dried fruits, they have like these big whole cherries right here. Pull them out and dice them up smaller because they're going to mess up your cake, all right? If they're too big, they're going to mess up your cake. So let me get a knife. Dice these up. Now because they're diced up, some parts of them are not floured. So what I'm going to do is just flour the fruits again to take care of that, all right? I should have done that like before. I should have cut up these cherries before. So, but no harm done. Let's just sift again. And now we're going to go back to the batter because we have to add our um, lemon extract. And remember, it's lemon extract, not vanilla. And it's a quarter to half a teaspoon of the extract, just depending on how much you like. Now, from the time I started, remember I beat the egg whites first and I lit the oven, right? So from the time I lit the oven till I got all this done, the oven is barely at 190 and it needs to come up to 350 so I'm just showing you that to let you know it doesn't take too long for you to get to this point all right so what I'm gonna do now remember this is our liquid we're gonna add our dry and our wet alternately is that the right word alternately so I do it in threes one third thereabouts I get the flour wet with whatever I have here already with the batter that I have before I turn on the hand mixer to give it a blend. Now that I have the flour all wet, let me go ahead and blend and then add some wet, which is orange juice, and then blend again. So we just go back and forth like this. In case you guys don't know who Joe is, he's my husband. He's running camera for me today and he said, why is it that cakes used to have to like mix up for so long when we were in Belize, like when you're creaming the butter and the sugar? 
it just seemed that they did that forever, like a good 15 minutes while I only did mine for like maybe four or five minutes. And I said, I don't know. I think because perhaps in the olden days, they used to mix the sugar and the butter with a wooden spoon. I used to mix the whole cake with a wooden spoon, right? So I'm adding some more wet. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump all the dry in here to be done with it. And look, the batter is looking thick and luscious. Now let's toss the fruits into the beaten egg whites. And then we're going to go ahead and use a spatula and fold. Notice I say we, like if you guys are here with me. Fold this in. So if you've not watched my video with the black fruit cake, uh, you probably don't know why we're doing this. The egg whites will act like a cloud. To go ahead and fold. Let me give this one more whisk and then we're going to get rid of the beaters. To clean these off then we're going to fold the fruits into the batter now let me let Joe show you this right here I have two cake pans floured well greased and floured this small one I'm going to give away to a friend his birthday is on Christmas Eve and I'm going to take it to where he works and give that away to him and then uh, this one definitely I'm going to use and I think I might need a third but I don't know the size yet until I start doling it out all right Joshua just asked me if I was going to need it. I'm like, Joshua, this is batter. You fold in batter and you need dough. But I'm not laughing because those are things people don't know if you don't bake, right? So this is the running joke. Every time you see Americans talk about a white food cake, that's what you see there. Raise your hand if you've tried this recipe that's on this thing. I have. I have because I wanted to see what people were talking about. I want to say it's a cross between a cake and a bread, but... Might be a cross between a cake and a cardboard box. <laughs> so let's get this in here. I could see why it's a running joke. But let me tell you, American people who are watching me, don't be afraid. You're not going to be disappointed in this cake because this is going to be no joke. It's going to be a really light, flavorful type fruity cake, all right? You fold the rest in because we don't want to like over mix this now, okay? So a little bit extra to have to beat the eggs, the egg whites. But you know what? I beat egg whites for waffles. If I'm not doing sourdough waffles, I beat the egg whites separately because that makes the um, waffles crispier. So we're almost done with this. Let Joshua come in closer. Just to show you how the egg whites are mixing in. See how thick the batter is? Okay? Your batter is not supposed to be thin. If it's thin, your cakes are going to drop in the middle. It's not because you're pregnant. You know, they always have those old wives saying, Oh, the cake dropped somebody pregnant. <laughs> All right, so as soon as I get this a little bit more folded in, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into two tins that I have ready. The temperature is up to 345. Yes. Oh, 350. How fortuitous for us. <laughs> oh, you guys, does it seem like I have a little bit too much fun when I'm doing this show? I don't even cook for real life anymore. I just cook for this show. Just saying. <laughs> so let's get my friend's cake first. So I'm just eyeballing how much I want to put in the pans. I just want to make sure that the batter doesn't come above um, eh, inch, inch and a half to the top. So let me go ahead and pat this down. And I'm trying to get three cakes out of this batter, all right? So let me go ahead and put some in this one. See how thick it is? You know what, guys? I don't even know if this is going to be enough. These little pans are deeper than I'm anticipating. It'll be alright though. I just didn't want like flat cakes. Let me just go ahead and level off my batter in each tin. And then into the preheated oven they go. The temperature is up to 350. 
for about 45 minutes, all right? And set the timer. This one looks a little bit too white still. This one looks better, but let's test this baby one right here. Yeah, that's done. Because it's smaller. We're just gonna let these go a few minutes more. And then we're gonna get them. The other two only needed to go another five minutes. So they're done. Let me remove them from the oven. Put them on the wire cooling rack. And then in about five minutes, well, let me test first to make sure that they are really done. In about five minutes, let's start releasing the cakes from the side of the tin. Dump it out. These ones should be easier because I'm just going to release the sides. Flip them over and then remove the tray on the bottom. Let me get the other one. And then after they're cooled completely, we're going to come back and cut, all right? Let me get this one off. I don't want my tops to be indented like that because I'm not going to be frosting these cakes, all right? So let it cool a little bit more. This one's already done cool, but I'm not going to cut this because this is a gift. And then I think I'm going to cut this little one. And we're going to take a look inside, all right? Time to cut, guys. Let me get in here. I can't believe that I didn't used to cut my cakes and stuff when I first started putting out content. Uh, what was wrong with me? I mean, people want to see the inside, right? Oh, my goodness. Take a look. Moist, gorgeous, mm-hmm. Note to self, if you use two of these pans, which is the smallest from a set of three, you can do two cakes like this if you didn't want to do this third one, all right? And it would be two thicker cakes, but it would come out nice. See, take a look at this. The fruits are all scattered. You know, that's a big deal for me. I love to have this uh, fruit scattered. You can put nuts in this cake too, but nuts are too expensive for me. So let me go ahead and taste. You guys didn't think I was going to leave you in the lurch with um, white fruit cake just before Christmas, right? You guys know I had to do this for you, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Joe's over there asking how does it taste. It tastes bad. None for him. <laughs> That's what we do you guys do that in your house? You tell them, oh it tastes bad. You don't want this. Mm -mm, not good. It's really good. Look, Josh, come on in. It's light. Light and fluffy. Not dry at all. And just a really wonderful taste with the orange juice and the lemon extract. It smells lemony, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys remember, if you are watching me on Facebook, don't forget to follow. On YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, leave me a comment. I'm going to see what you're going to say. What else? Share. The most important thing is share. Remember to tell them, girl, I got this recipe from that Bear Pantry Show lady. That's what people call me when they meet me. That Bear Pantry Show lady. Bye, guys. Say hello to my mother. Hi, everybody.